Tuesday morning and we're live, large and in charge on your feel-good breakfast show, hanging out with the doc, Dr. Oh, Darren morning, Green. Morning. He's here because today, the 1st of August, is World Cancer, World Lung Cancer Day and it is still one of the biggest killers of all the forms of cancers worldwide. But unlike many of the other forms of the disease, it can be prevented and that's why the doctor's here to answer all of your questions, to take all of your comments. If you do have stories to share with us, do call us on 21 430 Dr. Green, how are you, sir? Fantastic. Fantastic, thank you. Fantastic. Let's, let's talk about lung cancer and exactly what it is that makes it the most dangerous form of cancer or one of the most dangerous. Mm. I think why it's one of the biggest uh, causes of death, obviously, is because you can get it from being an active uh, participant in lifestyle issues like smoking. Mm -hmm. You can also get it from secondary smoking, which is being a bystander innocently, obviously. Wow. Uh, and, and why it's such a, a, an important uh, thing to recognize early is because you often only realize that it's there uh, because we don't do regular screening of the lungs unless you have symptoms. And by the time you develop symptoms of fatigue, tiredness, shortness of breath, etc., you've already had uh, quite a significant amount of damage to the lung and you've lost some of that percentage of lung function already. Yeah, we'll get into the different stages of lung cancer sure. very shortly, but I wanted to know why is it that some smokers uh, are more prone to developing lung cancer while others aren't and equally while some non-smokers who are act or active participants Correct. Uh, in, in, in surroundings are more prone. So why are more people more prone than others? 100%. So you get different types of lung cancer. You get mm. cancers that occur in people that have never smoked a cigarette in their life. You can also get lung cancer if you haven't smoked anything. Wow. Uh, so people that smoke are just at a higher risk for certain mm -hmm. types. Two main types, and it's about the pathology or the type of cells involved. The one's called small cell lung cancer, and the other one's called non-small cell lung cancer. Mm -hmm. The most common one is the non-small cell lung cancer. When it comes to why certain people that smoke for 40 years don't get cancer and why or some do, mm -hmm. obviously the whole nurture-nature debate comes in. It's about genes that get turned on by the environment, by ah. environmental factors factors, by lifestyle factors, obviously about certain cancers that are higher risk in families specifically. Yeah, take me through the different stages of lung cancer. What so, are they? So the best way to, to, to ask your GP about it and, and explain it to even a child is mm -hmm. the TNM classification. TNM. Yes, the T stands for the tumor. So if you've got a mass or lump growing in the lung, obviously it can, it can grow in the, the actual airway itself, which is the bronchus, the main pipe of the lung, the, mm -hmm. and then it branches off into the two uh, but bronchi and then the small tree, the bronchioles. Mm -hmm. uh, but what you need to understand, obviously, the tumor can be located in any uh, in any part of that pathway or in the lung interstitium, which is the spongy tissue surrounding those trees as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, what you have is the tumor. The N stands for the nodes. So when you have cancer that spreads and breaks out from that, that lung itself into mm -hmm. the blood vessels, it then spreads its seeds like a plant does. Mm -hmm to the surrounding drainage areas to the lymph nodes and it, it infiltrates the, the lymphatic system. And then the M is metastatic. So everyone knows that word. That means it's spreading to other organs, either from one lung to the others, to the regional lymph nodes, and then to the liver, the pancreas, the brain, and the bone tissue, for example. Sure. All right. So that so classification is used uh, mm -hmm. with, with different uh, you know, re reference ranges and numbers, like a T1, mm -hmm. N3. M4, okay, all right. Depending on how far it's spread, etc. So if it's just a, a T, T, T2, yes. M0, M0, it's local tumor, for example, in the lung. Makes absolute sense. Thank you so much, Dr. Green. We'll ask you to stay a little longer with us sure. as we continue to delve into what this day represents from a medical point of view, the 1st of August being World Lung Cancer Day. So give us a call on 021-430-9881 and engage. It's my feel-good well, it's Medical Tuesday and Dr. Green is in the house. We're talking about the 1st of August being World Lung Cancer Day. All the dangers that are associated with one of the deadliest forms of cancer out there. In fact, uh, more than 80% of lung cancer cases are directly caused by smoking. And it's quite weird how even nice. on the packs of the, of the cigarettes, it's advertised and it says that smoking causes cancer and you can have awareness days three times a week, but people still go out and smoke. So how do we, how do we make it more plain to people that, you know, listen, this is what you're doing to yourself? 
I think they need to understand how smoking causes lung cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, not going into a hectic biology lesson, but basically the, the actual uh, cigarettes, when you smoke them and you're actually combusting and burning some of the things that you contain in the cigarette from the tar, etc., what you're actually doing is causing damage to the DNA in your body. So the DNA has changed. When uh, certain uh, substances are, are actually ignited and they release vapors and fumes, what actually happens is it sticks to the DNA and makes you more vulnerable to actually change the molecular structure of the DNA, which wow. then leads to abnormal growth patterns uh, of abnormal cells, but at a rapid, rapid rate. So that's that's how it all works. So when you say when you think about it that way, are we then saying that potentially, if even if you don't develop lung cancer from smoking, but then you are predisposing your children one day to Correct. That? Secondary because smoking is massive. I mean, the exposure of that is, is incredible. So you're speaking about the genetic offspring yes, of exactly. someone. Yes. So yes, certainly there are certain cancers like bronchus CA, bronchus cancer, uh, that are definitely genetically linked where those people should even be more cautious about wow. exposure to carcinogenic uh, substances and chemicals in, yeah. in cigarettes. If you were to stop smoking today as a smoker, let's say somebody who's been smoking for the past 20 years, um, how long would it take for your lungs to recover to full capacity to be normal again? Mm. They're never completely normal, but to get to a, a close to baseline, 10 years. 10 years? A decade. <laughs> that is a very, very long time and perhaps a reason to not even start in the very first yeah, place. It puts that cycle out there. So, so where, where then do we, do we stand at the moment with regards to secondhand smoking and, and, and lung cancer. You're saying it is just as dangerous, right? It is, and then And then we move on to what people are saying, well, this could maybe help me quell my, my smoking addiction. E-cigarettes, are yeah, those that's just... Big, hey, yeah. uh, uh, vaping and e-cigarettes. So everyone wants to know, is it as bad, or is it better, or is it exactly the same? Uh, the, currently, obviously, the volume of studies regarding using e-cigarettes uh, is lacking for definitive evidence as to whether it's actually better or not in terms of being a carcinogen causing cancer. There are, what we do know is that it causes structural changes to the lung as well mm -hmm. and also impairs lung function. The good thing about it is that you can grade your nicotine dosage. You know, you get different strengths of nicotine when you actually purchase them. And by no means am I endorsing uh, e-cigarettes as, uh, as well. But uh, let's just say that uh, the, the, the negative side effects in terms of what the extent of uh, cancer-causing prediction is, is still being investigated, obviously, because it's still quite a new trend. Yes. And we have to look at it over time with masses of, massive amounts of people to power studies like that. All right, fantastic. Well, we're going to have one more segment with Dr. Green when we come back. Uh, we'll still keep our lines open on 021-430-9881. When we come back, we'll talk a bit more about the treatment of lung cancer. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back to it on Tuesday morning. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express on SABC3. Still hanging out with Dr. Darren Green, and we're talking about the 1st of August today, which is World Lung Cancer Day. Now, Dr. Green did say earlier on that early detection is an absolute must. So you do need to go around to your local GP uh, or your medical authority to get screened because unfortunately, there is no cure for lung cancer but there are treatment options. Take us through some of those. What happens if the disease is detected early? What kind of treatment options are you yeah, looking at? So, so there is cure depending on what stage you're at in mm -hmm. terms of chemotherapy, in terms of surgeries involved, yes. and in terms of radiotherapy. What we do know is certain types of cancers respond better to chemo and radiotherapy. Okay. Uh, and some obviously require surgery as well where you go and remove the tumor and aggressively after that give radiotherapy and uh, etc. Et mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much the, the baseline. You know, what's important about it is that you can have cancer and it only can be in your sputums. In other words, you haven't even seen a tumor, you can't even see a mass or a little speck of, or a dot on the x-ray, for example. Yeah. Uh, and already the cancer cells can be picked up in your, in your sputum when you cough. So if you have an unresolving cough or respiratory symptoms that can't be explained, don't ignore them and think, oh, it's just a cold, it's just a cold. Yeah. Yeah, then all we right. need to get it checked out. We've got a call on the line right now. Ian, all the way from Peter Maritzburg. Good morning, Ian. Hi, good morning, how are you? Very, very well, man. Thanks so much for the call. What would you like to share with us? Yeah, um, my question to Dr. Green is this. Um, should a person who um, discovers that they've got lung cancer at an early stage, can they have a, a lung transplant and would it help? And uh, if not, why? 
Brilliant yeah. question. All right, Dr. Green. So when it comes to organ transplants and tissue typing, obviously there are massive things in place in mm -hmm. terms of rejection of the organs, uh, in terms of compatibility, etc. Whether we're talking about kidneys, whether we're talking about corneas, uh, etc., you need to un understand that it's quite a complex uh, histochemical process. Mm -hmm. So your immunological system responds to, 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 to that. Or not everyone is a candidate for, uh, for a lung transplant. You've got to look at the comorbid disease, the complete syst systemic uh, uh, you know, makeup of the patient regarding their, their makeup. What other uh, complications have they developed from that? What are the other systems functioning, like the heart, for example? Mm -hmm. Will the heart be able to handle that? The age of the patient uh, and also obviously their, their, their their status at yeah. that stage. So lung transplants certainly are something that, that are done. Uh, they're obviously not as common as, as, as we'd like them to be. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason is obviously organ donors are lacking. We need people to uh, be aware of the fact that you can change lives by yeah. becoming an organ donor. And uh, certainly also, we mentioned in the early stages, I think the typing of the cancer is very important mm -hmm. because obviously a massive operation like that is a highly invasive surgery. Uh, and often you have just as brilliant results with early detection yeah. in treating, obviously, uh, in, the, in the modules of chemotherapy as well, as yeah. I mentioned earlier. And finally, in closing, your message to people out there who are smokers, perhaps who have loved ones who are smokers, who might be concerned uh, about their health or the health of their loved one during this world uh, lung, lung cancer, cancer day. day. Yeah, I think uh, just be aware of the fact that your, your risk of smoking doesn't only depend on the amount or packs that you're smoking a day. It's how long you've been doing that for as well. Mm -hmm. Remember also that uh, smoking doesn't only put you, it's not the number one associated risk of lung cancer only, but up to 13 other cancers are also promoted and triggered by smoking. Mm -hmm. So that's just not worth it. Dr. Green, <laughs> thank you so much. We look forward to having you again thank next you very week much. we shall engage in another Medical Tuesday Indeed. topic. And I hope that you found that very enlightening at home.